Dr. Monica here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I am bowing to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. That's right. There is a light that's inside of you. Even if you can't feel it, even if you can't acknowledge it, there is absolutely a light inside of you. And the only reason you can acknowledge it is because the people who raised you did not um, fan the flames of that little light that's inside of you. So this channel and my work is all about helping people connect to that light that's inside of them and helping you rise out of the subconscious mind, out of the darkness, out of the shadows, and having you blend with and integrate with the divine self that you are. And um, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much. I would also like to say um, thank you to all of my YouTube subscri subscribers. You guys are freaking phenomenal and awesome. I appreciate you so much. This channel is now over 100,000 strong. Um, 100,000 100, subscribers. It's phenomenal. When I think back to the idea that, you know, I started this journey as a single mom with three children, with three jobs, waking up at two and three o'clock in the morning just to write, you know, the road back to me. And that's really how my journey started was um, realizing I was codependent. I had been brainwashed by a narcissist and a codependent mom, my narcissistic dad and my codependent mom, and two unrecovered adult children of alcoholics that bouncing off of each other. Um, being in therapy after, you know, realizing that I have to get divorced and realizing that I ha I was brainwashed and conditioned to be a codependent and that I had begun doing the same to my own children. And uh, that reality struck me between the eyes and I knew that I had to do something. And I put my big girl panties on, broke free, break, broke, had a breakthrough, you know, ended my marriage and embarked on the most amazing journey and uh, began to learn how to love myself. And so... Um, Thank you all for being here. And I'm so sorry that I'm so long-winded so often. Um, now, the reason I'm doing this video. So if you are, if you guys follow me on Facebook, you know that, you know, the shit's hitting the fan in my family. So um, mom's in an um, assisted living facility with dementia, incontinent, doesn't know my name, doesn't know my sister's name, my brother's name. She knows that we're her children, but she can't recall our names. Um, it's very, very sad. My dad is coming unglued, you know, his uh, whole life, at, at least my experience of him was this dictator, totalitarian, only his feelings mattered, you know, and if you showed any emotional weakness, ah, you're a little, you know, drama queen, oh yeah, he's just a big baby, he's got to suck it up, you know, this was always my father. Anybody who ever showed any hint of emotion was weak to my father, and today, my father is falling apart, literally coming unglued. He is completely emotional. He is vulnerable. He is, you know, and he's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I can't, you know, go back home to Pennsylvania. Right now, my dad's in New York with my brother and I. I don't know who's going to take care of me, you know. And suddenly it's okay that my father has emotions. And my brother and I and my sister are really struggling with what's going on in our family because um, but there are some miracles happening and that's what the purpose of this whole video is right so when you grow up in this type of a home where it's like you're not allowed to talk about your feelings if you have feelings you are labeled selfish you are labeled a little bitch you are labeled a drama queen you are labeled crazy you were told that that never happened you're making that up you just want attention um, when you grow up in that type of a home, when you were ignored or get away from the table, you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. You know, when you're six years old and you want to pee your pants because, you know, you don't feel good and you just want your mother and father to hug you and your mother's acting like she didn't hear anything and daddy's screaming and yelling and you don't know what to do. So you go upstairs and you cry and you implode on yourself and there's no one there to take care of you and you're six, you have a six-year-old psyche. And this is your experience over and over and over with these people who are ignoring you. And then these people are 76 one day and they're coming to you to take care of them. It's a very bizarre experience. So um, growing up in this type of a household, like my brother, my sister and I were invalidated consistently. We each struggled with depression, um, um, eating disorders, um, Taking drugs, experimenting with drugs, love addiction for sure, um, some risk-taking behavior, blah, 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 blah. We all suffered from this. Um, and But what was interesting was that I woke up much sooner 
than my brother and my sister. So for 20 years or so, I had been saying to my sister and my brother, like, this is fucked up. Like, dad's completely self-absorbed. And my sister especially would fight me. You, you're just very critical of daddy. Da, 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 right? Um, my brother, oh, Lisa, get over the past. You know, what are you making a big deal over the past for? Blah, 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 blah. You were always this way. Okay, this is what I've heard for the past 20 years with my sister and my brother. Dear ones, you have to let go, okay? If you are the, mo the emotionally honest person in your family and you are telling your siblings or your aunts and your uncles or whoever, if you're telling people your story and they're not hearing you, let go, okay? Because I let go 20 years ago. When I started to learn about you know, what was happening in my family, I tried to rescue my brother and sister. They wanted nothing to do with it, right? Very interesting. My whole life, I have felt like an outsider looking in, like a fish outside the aquarium looking at this family inside this, uh, this aquarium. And I just couldn't get in. I couldn't experience this feeling of belonging with this family. And the bond that they had, that they shared with each other, the four of them, was denial. And I, for whatever reason, incarnated as, a, as an emotionally <clears throat> very intuitive, um, psychic, and um, emotionally honest individual where I couldn't be like them. I couldn't pretend things were okay when they weren't. So anyway, my whole life I'm waiting for, you know, to be validated for someone to say, you're not crazy. This is what's going on. Well, holy Hannah, my brother and my sister are now on the same page. They see what I have always seen. And it is amazing. It's amazing. It's very validating. It's very encouraging. Doesn't change a damn thing though. Doesn't change a damn thing. So today what's happening is my father is um, uh, coming unglued, like I said earlier. He's, uh, he's threatening to commit suicide every other minute. Um, he is refusing to take care of himself. He is, um, he's 76 years old, perfectly healthy, had a knee replacement. Like literally physically, there's nothing wrong with my dad. But, but in his head, he's losing control. And you, if you've followed my channel, you know that that us thinking that we have control is an illusion. We're not in control of anything except how we respond and how we think um, and, how, and, and what we do about how we feel about situations, right? So my father thought he had all this control over his money. Now the nursing home is sucking him dry. We told him to set, set himself up for later years, you know, with him and my mom. He didn't listen because he knew everything, right? And he would accuse my brother and I, you're just worried about what you're going to get. You're worried about what happens when I die. No, we want to make sure that you and mommy are protected in your old age. And the money that you've worked for is not sucked, you know, dry, you know, um, from institutions that may have to take care of you. Always flipped, always flipped, always flipped everything that we said. Completely over emotional. He is, you know, beside himself. He wants all the attention that, I mean, if there are 10 people in the room, he wants to be the one in the middle of that table and everybody asking him, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, that's terrible. And then he gets up, you give him all this validation. He takes a nap for 10 minutes. He wants to come in. Everybody's got to sit down and, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that he gets up, you feed him something. He goes to sleep. He comes back. Oh, that's constant. He is a, an abyss. He is a bottomless pit of, of, need. He is a bottomless pit of, of, um, the, the need to be, to have you mirror back to him, how he wants to be seen and how he wants to be seen right now is that his pain is worse than anybody else's pain. He doesn't even see how he is affecting the other people in the family. He doesn't see it. He's not asking you how you're doing. He's not asking you how this is affecting you. It's just about him. Very interesting. When we were growing up, it was about his anger and his rage. And now it's about his, his self-pity and how his life is changing and how everything is so sad. But the common, the common denominator is it's all about me. It's all about me. Now, I'm not saying I do not have compassion for this man. He's a human being. Even though the daughter in me wants to really give it to him and tell him we're here because of you, because you never listen to anybody, because you're the smartest man in the room, even though just saying you quit high school, like never went to college, you know, never took, never picked up a book on psychology, don't know anything about 
about codependency and adult children of alcohol, but you know everything. You know everything. So there's a part of me that really wants to give it to him. But I'm also, I do have compassion for somebody who whose ideas about themselves and about the world are falling apart. I do have compassion for him. So um, I just wanted you guys, encourage you guys to hold on to yourselves. Those of you who are going through something similar, who have, like me, been raised in a codependent, narcissistic, ACOA, dry home, who have been minimized your whole life, who have been told that you're crazy, you're not crazy. If you think something's up in your house, chances are there is something up in your house. If you think that your parent is a narcissist or, or a severe codependent below the veil, um, is unable to see what's really going on, then chances are that's happening. If you think you're being abused, you're being abused. You have to trust your instincts. What I'm trying to tell you guys, you know, in this video of 11 minutes is that son of a bitch, I was right. <laughs> like since I was little, I have felt something's off with my family since I was little, you know, when I got divorced and I realized that my parents had brainwashed me and not knowingly, but had conditioned me to be a codependent and that there was this strong element of denial in my home. I was right. Even though the people that I love most that shared my own blood, shared my DNA, told me I was crazy, told me I was nuts. Turns out I was right. It took me, I'll be 53 this year in 2018. It took me this long to have my sister and my brother to see what I see. Now that may or may not happen for you, but that's really not what this video is all about. That's not what today's message is about. Today's message is about you learning to hold on to yourself. Today's message is about you holding on to your truth. Even if nobody in your reality validates your truth, hold on to your truth. Today is about you honoring you. Now, what I'm going through right now in my life is I have to find a way as an adult child of a narcissist and, and um, passive aggressive codependent mom um, is I have to somehow learn to deal with what's happening now, which is my father falling apart. I already told my brother this morning that we have to accept that my father may commit suicide. That, you know, once, if he, if he doesn't dig deep, if he doesn't help himself, if he doesn't go to psychiatric outpatient care, if he doesn't take the medication, if he doesn't eat the well, the right way, if he doesn't monitor his blood glucose, if he does not allow us to get an aide in the house with him who can make sure he takes his medication, if he doesn't allow us to put him into a facility where they can monitor him 24 hours a day, if he doesn't allow us to move him to New York and he wants to stay in Pennsylvania, then my brother and I are just going to have to accept that there are things that we cannot control. And um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because the reality is that you know, my father, the next time you hear this, the ne I don't mean to sound morbid, but it, listen, it is what it is, you know. You know, I may make a video one day and explain to you guys, you awesome, amazing people on the road to recovery, you warriors, you, that my father has, unfortunately, committed suicide. It may happen. I'm not saying I want it to happen, but it is, it may happen. Um, and again, what I'm going to do in that situation and what I do every day is I'm going to accept what I can't control. I'm going to see him making it. I'm going to see that the conversation that I have with him today somehow is able to shift him. You know, I'm going to see, you know, I'm going to talk to my dad about his attachment trauma because in my opinion, he's regressing. He's becoming a three-year-old. He's the same three-year-old today that he was when his own mother committed suicide. I'm going to do what I can to talk to him about post-traumatic stress. I'm going to try to enlighten him about attachment trauma. I'm going to try to help him under to understand that you know, if he's experiencing PTSD from his own mother's suicide, it's very, very possible that he is being flooded with the same types of emotional responses that he felt when he was three, when he felt abandoned, which would make yeah. sense. Now, you know, now, now that my mom's out of the house, it's a nut. There you go. That's the wound. Now, now another woman's been removed from his life. You know, his, his security blanket's gone, you know, and now all these symptoms of, you know, regression is showing up, this helplessness, this despair. I get it. I'm going to try to reach him, but there's always a chance that he bites my head off. There's always a chance he says that I'm being, I'm full of psychological mumbo jumbo. 
There's always a chance, he says, don't analyze me. There's always that chance. Do I have control over that? No. But what I can do is try to get my father, my narcissistic father, to awaken to the truth. If I can, I can. If I can't, I can't. And either way, I'll be okay. That rhymed. Amazing. Amazing. But anyway, anyway. Dear ones, you are loved. We are one. And you are a warrior if you are on this path to recovery and enlightenment. Because you have to be a warrior to face your truth. You have to be a warrior to take responsibility and accountability for what you can change and then actually change it. So I honor you. I adore you. And thank you so much for being here. Until next time. Namaste. Bye for now.